The food that we eat and the nutrients in the food that we eat play a key role in our brain health. In particular, we are now learning that the food that we eat, the nutrients in our food, may actually help protect our brains against aging. This is really important because not only is the global population aging, but we all know that our brains are aging each day. As our brains age, it comes with an associated risk for cognitive decline, and this is a public health concern, and it's a concern for each of us as individuals. There's no single strategy that can guarantee lifelong brain health, but a growing body of scientific research shows nutrition, the food that we eat and the nutrients in those foods, plays a key role in how our brains age. In particular, various nutrients in our food appear to influence key pathways related to brain aging. These include inflammation, synaptic plasticity, and even the structural integrity of our brains. This means that various foods and the nutrients in those foods may translate into a lower risk for age-related brain changes, as well as a lower risk for dementia. In this video, we'll review the latest science on clinically studied dietary nutrients that may help to aid in slowing brain aging and can help to protect our brain function over our lifetimes. I'm Dr. Austin Perlmutter, and if you're new here, I create content all about how to protect your brain, improve your brain function. If you care about your brain and if you like science, be sure to subscribe. Also important to note, this is for educational purposes only. Let's jump right in with the first of the nutrients that may help to protect our brains against aging. These are the omega-3 fatty acids that have been correlated with improved brain volume, better brain function. Let's get right into it. Omega-3 fatty acids are commonly called omega-3s. They're a form of unsaturated fatty acid. They're present in our diets, and they're in particular enriched in our brains. There are several different omega-3 fatty acids, but the best studied and the most important to know about here are going to be EPA or eicosapentaenoic acid and DHA or docosahexaenoic acid. DHA and EPA primarily come in our diet in the form of marine dietary sources. So they're found in algae, they're found in fish, uh, but they tend only to be found in our diet in higher concentrations when we're consuming marine-based foods. EPA and DHA are both critical for maintaining neuronal membrane integrity and for keeping neuroinflammation in check. In a 2014 study published in the journal Neurology, they found that higher blood levels of EPA and DHA were associated with a larger total brain volume. And in particular, they were also associated with a larger volume of the hippocampus, which is key to memory. And this was a study that was conducted in postmenopausal women. These results were secondarily confirmed in 2022 when they did a larger study finding that higher levels of these omega-3 fats in the blood correlated with a larger hippocampus and with better cognitive function. Now there's lots more to say about EPA, DHA, and omega-3s in addition to the larger conversation around fats, but as it relates to what the literature seems to be telling us, most recommendations and the research would indicate that we should be aiming for at least two servings of fatty fish weekly now that means we're trying to get an equivalent amount of EPA and DHA to what we would get from eating about two servings, two to three servings of fatty fish a week. So if we're not going to be consuming these fish, we might consider supplementation with a combined DHA and EPA supplement. That can be fish-based in terms of a marine oil. You can also get this in an algae form, which is better if you're a vegan, obviously. Low intake of EPA and DHA is, I should note, of particular concern to vegans because, as I've said before, we primarily get EPA and DHA from the marine-based sources. Even though we can get an omega-3 from our nuts, seeds, and other plant-based sources, we have a hard time converting that into adequate levels of EPA and subsequently DHA. So again, we're shooting to get roughly the equivalent of two to three servings of fatty fish a week, something around the neighborhood of 500 milligrams of EPA and DHA a day. Uh, and if we are vegans, this is something that we should consider supplementation. In particular, we might look at an algae-based supplement. Okay, let's move on to nutrient number two. So these are uh, nutrients called polyphenols. These are plant molecules that are linked to brain longevity. Polyphenols are an incredibly diverse set of molecules. There's actually over 8,000 of them and they're found across different plant foods. They're especially concentrated in our diet in spices and herbs and dark leafy greens in berries, onion tea, fruits and vegetables. Basically they're found across all of these plant-based foods. What makes polyphenols so interesting to researchers, and I actually published a study on this last year, is because we're now understanding that polyphenols 
may influence a host of pathways linked to everything from overall function of our bodies to the immune system, and in particular to better brain function and longevity. This potential value of polyphenols may help to explain why foods and beverages that are higher in polyphenols are linked to better brain health and overall health metrics. One interesting example was published in Nature Translational Psychiatry in 2022, and what they found is that those people who were consuming tea, tea is actually an amazing source of polyphenols, were 16% less likely to get dementia during a nine-year follow-up period. In a 2020 study in the journal Neurology, which was looking at 921 participants, these were older people, average age of 81, they tracked the dietary intake of a subtype of polyphenols called flavanols, and they found that those consuming the most had almost a 50% lower rate of developing Alzheimer's disease over a six-year period. They followed this up in a 2022 study in Neurology, finding that total flavanol intake was linked to slower decline in cognitive function and less memory loss. In a more recent advanced analysis of polyphenols and brain age, researchers studied the effects of an 18-month intervention focused on increased polyphenol intake, and they used a MRI-based evaluation of brain age. This study was pretty recently published back in November of 2024. What they found is that a younger brain age, meaning a relatively younger looking brain, was linked to higher intake of polyphenols. So this is important because what we're saying here is when you look at imaging, you can see how old a brain looks based on variables like how much atrophy or shrinkage of the brain is shown on the imaging. And in this study, they showed that a higher intake of polyphenols was correlated with a younger brain in terms of this brain aging testing on MRI. As I've said, polyphenols are pretty ubiquitous in the food supply, but specifically they're found in minimally processed foods. They can be found in animal-based foods, but it's a much lower level than what you would find in plants. Because basically the only reason you'd find polyphenols in animal-based foods is because the animal consumed them in plants. Some excellent sources of polyphenols include nuts, seeds, spices, tea, coffee, any colorful fruit or vegetable. There's no overall consensus on optimal daily intake of polyphenols, but there is some data suggesting around 1.2 grams or 1200 milligrams of dietary polyphenols may be something to consider on top of an overall healthy diet to support brain health. The third nutrient we're going to talk about in terms of supporting the brain, and in particular, helping to slow brain aging is magnesium. So adequate dietary magnesium intake has been linked to multiple aspects of good brain function. There are so many reasons why magnesium may benefit the brain. Uh, this relates to things like brain aging through neuroplasticity, through inflammation, through oxidative stress. And more recently, they've actually shown there is a link between low dietary magnesium and dementia, meaning people with lower magnesium as what they get through their diet have a higher risk for dementia. I'll also note that if you're interested in any of the studies that I'm discussing here, you can click the link to the article, which will be in the notes from the show, and you can get access to all of these studies that have been peer reviewed and published over the last few years. Higher intake of dietary magnesium has been linked not only to a lower risk of dementia, but also to a lower risk of progressing from healthy brain function to the precursor for dementia, which is mild cognitive impairment or MCI. Uh, in a recent imp uh, impressive, I should say, especially impressive review of over 500,000 people from the UK Biobank, they found that higher dietary intake of magnesium was linked to higher brain volumes, and especially larger hippocampi. These are, again, the brain's memory center in both men and women. What foods are rich in magnesium? Spinach, Swiss chard, pumpkin seeds, chia seeds, almonds, legumes. But for those who are looking for a more tailored intervention, you might consider working with a healthcare practitioner to test your levels and consider supplementation. There are multiple forms of magnesium. There are multiple supplements on the market. I think it is helpful to find out what your levels are before you decide to do too much supplementation. The next up topic here is something that I've been discussing for quite a while, which is creatine. So creatine has been best known for its role in supporting muscle performance, but we're now understanding that creatine may be a brain nutrient. And in particular, creatine may be especially valuable for aging populations. Why is this the case? Well, creatine helps to regenerate the energy currency of the cell called adenosine triphosphate or ATP. 
This may be especially relevant for brains that are overly taxed. Now, what does a tax brain look like? Why do I use that term? In the context of sleep deprivation or in the context of high levels of stress, it is proposed that the brain may be a bit energy deficient. So these may be uh, energy deficient states, but we're also now recognizing that an aged brain may have more trouble getting access to energy. So an aged brain may have energetic issues and creatine may help to offset some of those energetic issues. Uh, I should note a study just came out. It was uh, not a blinded study. It was not a placebo controlled study, but it did show that creatine monohydrate supplementation in people who had existing dementia could actually benefit cognitive state. Now, again, it's a very small study, but it is some very interesting new data. And you can read or watch my entire take on that study on my channel. Creatine is found naturally in animal-based foods, but it is usually studied at higher levels, and those higher levels are attained through supplementation. In a 2022 review published in Nutrition, they found that creatine supplementation was linked to improved memory in healthy people, especially those aged 66 to 76. In a 2024 pu publication in Nature Scientific Reports, higher doses of creatine supplementation were found to enhance brain function after a sleep deficit. While these data are preliminary, these types of data suggest there may be value in creatine supplementation for older adults seeking to enhance and protect brain function. And again, I'll just note because this study just came out, this new publication did indicate a potential benefit to not only cognition, but also to brain creatine levels in people with dementia who took creatine supplementation at a relatively high dose. For people who are seeking to learn more about creatine supplementation, I would say the overall preponderance of the data so far has focused on a dosing range of around three to five grams a day of creatine monohydrate, even though we are seeing in some of these more recent studies in sleep deficit and in Alzheimer's disease, a higher dosing of creatine. So we are starting to see some signal that in certain populations, it may be more beneficial to take higher amounts of creatine, but the vast majority of the research that's been published so far is on that three to five grams of creatine monohydrate a day. Now, lastly, let's talk about a nutrient that I think uh, is really important and also tends to be a little bit neglected, especially in the com uh, conversations right now about elimination diets and more extreme diets, and that is dietary fiber. So why does dietary fiber matter for brain health? Well, we know that there is a powerful gut-brain connection. It's called the gut-brain axis. That what happens in the gut, and that includes the microbiome, it includes our gut cells, influences what happens in the brain and vice versa. The gut-brain axis is a critical factor in brain health, and dietary fiber is key to the health of the gut. Fiber-rich diets promote the growth of beneficial gut bacteria that produce molecules called short-chain fatty acids, which have names like butyrate. Butyrate is believed to help to regulate the immune system, reduce inflammation, and support integrity of the blood-brain barrier. This is the barrier that surrounds the brain and keeps it um, from being exposed to things that it shouldn't be exposed to and keeps the things that we want coming into the brain able to come into the brain. Bottom line on fiber is that most people don't consume anywhere near amount near the amount that is recommended. The daily amount that people are consuming uh, is roughly half of what is recommended. So it's the actual goal is around 14 grams of fiber per every 1,000 calories. That means around 25 grams a day for women and about 38 grams a day for men. Um, but again, most people are not getting anywhere near that amount. So. Dietary fiber intake as it relates to brain function has been linked to better cognitive function in adults age 60 or above. And one study of 1,070 adults found that there were benefits to intake of fiber up to 34 grams a day. Another observational study in roughly 3,000 people found that consuming more dietary fiber was correlated with an over 25% lower risk for developing dementia over a 20-year period. And in a recent preprint study, researchers looked at brain gray matter and compared these results with dietary quality. What they found was pretty pronounced. They found dietary fiber correlated with more gray matter volume, including in the hippocampus. So what do you do about this information? Well, it's pretty basic. You eat more dietary fiber. Where do you get this from? Most minimally processed plant-based sources will have a good amount of dietary fiber, but some good places to start would be fruits, vegetables, legumes, seeds, nuts, and whole grains to support your brain via your gut.
So we've covered here five of these major nutrient groups that seem to help protect the brain that actually may help to protect our brains against more rapid aging. I will say kind of generally, the goal here is not to supplement with a single nutrient and have an otherwise unhealthy diet. It's always to improve overall dietary quality, but these are maybe some of the nutrients that are doing a bit more of the heavy lifting as it relates to helping protect our brains against aging. If you enjoyed any of this content, if this was interesting to you, please subscribe to my channel. It helps me a lot. And leave me a comment. Let me know what you liked or didn't like about this content. Uh, that'll help me in what I make moving forward. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Dr. Austin Perlmutter, and I'll talk to you soon.